Hey everyone, this is Rod White, and you're either listening to or watching The Rod White Bow Show. Welcome to the Rod White Bow Show. It is the, uh, is it technically still the first week? It's the eighth, so I guess going in the second week yeah. of the season. And we are in what seemed to be Elktopia for little bulls at least. <laughs> there were some big yeah. ones. We saw a couple good ones. Yeah. And so this hunt was um, as much about, I guess, for me, um, getting meat as anything else. And we accomplished that. Yep. We hunted maybe. And I exercise. Guess, eight hours. For the three. <laughs> three elk. <laughs> And then we hunted 12 and got or none. Or more, yeah. yeah. We got in a funk. Yeah. We got a little pickier, though. Paige did some passing. She could have shot four spikes, four or five. At least. Just chose not to at 40 yards or under. Well, hopefully we got our audio all cool because we got some wind blowing in here. And I need to introduce you to you because some, some of those guys out there that are my hardcore hunting followers, you know, they don't necessarily shoot tournaments. Yeah. So <laughs> this is uh, um, Paige, formerly Pierce yeah. Gore. Right? I got that right. Yep. yep. And Dave Gore. And uh, we're coming at you from somewhere in the mountains out west. Maybe in Idaho, maybe in Montana or something Wyoming, like that. Colorado, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we already railed Paige about her uh, little experience with a tag. She posted a post yeah. to Facebook and had what she thought was a, a season number. It wasn't your fault. No. Nope. And uh, there's a number on there, and a friend thought maybe – that was where we were hunting at. Yeah, that was <laughs> funny. Still uh, looking for Unit 47A. I, I hope yep. they go there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's a good spot. But we spot. had a good time. And Paige, um, Paige is killing it right now on the tournament circuit. She uh, shoots for Bowtech, and I'm not even going to attempt sponsors. So why don't you guys rattle those off real quick for everyone? Oh, gosh. Bowtech, Carbon Express Arrows, uh, Sherlock Sights, Carter Releases, um, Go Out Camo, which we're repping right now, and America's Best Bow Strings. No pressure. Um, yeah. Come on. Think. Loophole. <laughs> optics. Elevation. Yeah. What and else? uh Who's got the oh, phone AE. for a cheat sheet? I can't forget A. <laughs> okay, A. Um Oh man. Specialty archery. I don't know. I did pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Control freak stabilizers. Did I say that? You nope, didn't say that. Not yet. Go. <laughs> All right. I think that that's pretty good. <laughs> Woo! Sorry if I forgot you. And my list of sponsors is uh Rod White Bow oh. Show. Yep. Oh, there you <laughs> right go. now. And Dave? Us. We all, yeah, we all share the responsibilities. <laughs> <laughs> well, yep. hopefully our audio doesn't cut out too bad through this whole thing. But um, she has been absolutely killing it in a lot of different circuits. You shoot NFAA, NAA. Well, I'm sorry, not NAA anymore. Was it World yeah. Archery? Yeah, uh, USA I think Archery. Still, USA archery. archery. I don't know. They change the name like every week. Yeah. And um, I still call it FIDA. I guess you're, if I were just from an outsider looking in, the big thing you really kill it at is Reading style tournaments. Yeah, I love those. Um, this is my first year back on the FIDA circuit after a while, and I just jumped into the number one nationally ranked spot. So that's kind of cool, first year back in the circuit to jump in there. Um, and then NFAA is really what I like the most. So definitely shooting that tour. ASA is a lot of fun. I just can't judge distance or I'd be there. <laughs> Maybe that known class with us. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Dave, what do you shoot mostly? Same thing. Tons of Redding style stuff. I've been shooting a couple feeders this year. Kind of got my feet wet with that and learning how to deal with the wind. The wind kills me right now. So. Well, Dave and uh, – well, Dave, you're hunting with a wrist strap. But one thing that's really unique about um, Paige is Paige hunts with a wrist – or shoots with a wrist – Tournaments. Yeah, I do. And uh, kills it. So I don't yeah. know. Do you get any little tips out there for guys who are out there? Gals um, are out there? You know, a lot of people think that when you shoot those that it's like, I, I even call it like the punchy release. But it's really easy to shoot those back tension to, and to do it correctly. And so for me, I just wrap my pointer finger around and then just relax and start pulling. And not only are you pulling back, but also the motion of the strap, like sliding forward on your wrist, helps fire it. So you don't have to help the release go off. Um, so I shoot it the same way hunting that I do for tournaments. But that's, I mean... It, it works for both. Pretty much whatever release, and, and he usually does the same thing, whichever one we use for tournaments mm -hmm. is what we usually hunt with, yeah. whether it's a thumb or a hinge. We've I've been shooting a hinge for most all tournaments the last couple of years, so I generally don't hunt with my hinge, but sometimes I might. Usually no real a thumb. Yeah, usually a thumb button. No real reason for that, or you just um, like the... I like having a little control control for if it needs to go in a hunting situation. <laughs> <'Cause> awesome. <laughs> a hinge, I will execute back tension regardless. So you're gonna it make could it go be a bad, <laughs> yeah. 
I think with a hinge, I, I feel like if I'm hunting with a hinge and I need to make it go, things can go really bad fast. Yeah, you can have to, more movement rather yeah. than just the movement of your finger to get it yep. gone. So. Well, this is uh, Paige's first elk bow hunt, and this you've hunted before and killed several yeah. of the bow. Yep. It's been a while. Um, yeah, we had a couple years off with buying new houses and stuff, but now we're back. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we had a good time because um, Paige shot her first with a bow. Yep. Spiker. Yeah. Wind's getting a little wicked on us here. Um, and Dave shot a good bull. Yeah. We killed a nice five by six. And mine came in really good. Pages came in good. All three that we killed this trip came into a cow call really well. Yeah. So. Except mine. Yours did. A little bit. <laughs> I'm covering up for a wind. Sorry. Yeah. Look, I was about to sneeze. No. Um, well, so let's talk about, because this is early season. And I'm probably going to kick this out as soon as I get to an internet spot. Um, for you, Dave, I don't know when you, it sounded like you mostly hunted a lot in Wyoming and a lot more so when bulls are bugling because we had almost no bugling action. Yep. Yeah, we usually try to go the second or third week, and by then they're talking pretty good. And There we used to call in a lot of bulls, a lot of smaller bulls, but they come to the call really well. So it's a lot of fun. Out here, what, the first four days, would we hear two bugles? Maybe. Maybe. So they're super quiet, hot. It was in the 90s one day and high 80s all the others. So it was some work. We had to outsmart them instead of call them in <laughs> what uh what strategy did you use between the two of them because they were kind of both a little bit different right yeah um pages we actually spotted from on top of the hill when we were leaving camp and made a move got the wind good got a kind of in front of him kind of diagonal from him and just cow called a couple times and he keyed in on it and came right in and stopped him and she made a good shot at 69 yards and he's in the cooler now nice yep and then yours was my, yeah, mine was a little bit different. We had just hiked up a big old mountain and took a little break, and Paige decided to sit on a trail, and I was going to go check out some new stuff and just walking real slow up a draw and came in on some elk, and there's a bull pushing some cows around, not making noise, though. Cows weren't making noise. Bull wasn't making any noise, and he was pushing cows by, and one cow kind of got a little cagey and made me, and she started boogering off, so I cow called, and he came right to me and killed him at probably 35 or 37 yards. And then uh, Lexi, who's hiding behind the camera back there, <laughs> she had a we kind of kind of called cold cold calling, I guess you'd call it. Um, in the early season, I've done really well with that. I know we tried it on a bull, a great bull, a 300-inch uh, bull, and he came and poked his head in and turned around and left, unfortunately, yep. on Paige. But you can get two elk tags in Idaho. Mm -hmm. So full disclosure, that's where we're at, <laughs> but not exactly going to tell you where we're at. Um, but that's, that's the cool thing about Idaho, too. You guys both, I mean, we had three elk down, like, in eight hours yeah mm -hmm. three, three days trips apart out. just boom 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 yep on the miles go grab another tag <laughs> yep yeah. so we tried to fill that and that bull um that almost worked he kind of oh, yeah. came she was close on yeah. a couple and i mean i could have filled the tag like i said with spikes or cows or mm -hmm. whatever but when i bought the second tag it was like my intention was okay now i want to try and get like a bull i said a branch bull i don't care how many points like it'd be a little three point a little four point <laughs> but i want to try and get one so i just kept passing uh, apparently I passed too much, <laughs> but um, it was pretty cool. Like, you know, we got on bulls each day, like different times of the day. And so I think that was worth it. It kind of showed me how the bigger bulls work compared to like calling in the cows and the spikes. A little different. Yeah, yeah. They get a little sure. wiser sometimes. Yeah. Like you call and they go the other way. <laughs> well, so. it's early season and hot too. So that's part of our problem. They're not real right. fired up. This yeah. is the first time we really had wind. And yep. of course we're down in a little a cloud cover gut of something and dad gum it's blowing <laughs> yeah we cave across from us i think there's a mountain line up there looking at us yeah there. that's what i keep looking for traders come down here <laughs> <laughs> um so let's talk a little bit about because this is your first elk hunt and so a lot of people that listen to, to me specifically are midwesterners and um out east so that have never been on elk hunt before and this is this is as legit as it gets we're hunting yep. over the counter public land and we're backpacking yep. in i'm gonna on say backs, we were, everything the elk we were hunting were probably around I'm going to guess at this, four and a half, five and a half miles in. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it's it's a ways. Yeah. Camp was three and a half, maybe a hair four. over. Maybe four. Yeah. And a up ways. a good grade, too, to get our camp in. <laughs> I mean, right out of the truck, we were hiking hard. Yeah. I took you guys on the special scenic route yeah. on the way in. <laughs> he got us lost, is what he means. He blind no for lost. blindfolded for us. A long <laughs> took us off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> it was the long way round. So yep. if, if um, what what were your expectations, I guess? That's, for me, like, <clears throat> that I know a lot of guys and gals out there listening and thinking, I want to go do this on my own. What, in your head, what did it look like to you compared to what it actually was? Because I know you went through moments where Dave told me, like, you were going to actually, or maybe yeah. you told me you were going to 
pretend break your ankle <laughs> yeah. next time you got to the truck. Get well, airlifted out of there. <laughs> yeah, there's a new word I learned from Louisiana, and it was Paige's <laughs> attitude the first two days. She's a little pooty. <laughs> pooty. <laughs> yeah, I, I might have been. It's some form of pissy and moody, I guess, but <laughs> she was it. <laughs> That's um, courtesy of Lexi. Yes. Yep. She brought a whole picture of words with us. No, this, okay, if you tried to explain to me what it was going to be like, before we went, like, I never would have understood. And if you had, like, shown me pictures of, like, oh, this is where we're going to be walking and what you're going to be doing, I'd have been like, Haha, no, like, not going to happen. <laughs> I think I heard some I can'ts. I'm going to die. First, yeah. I feel like was probably <laughs> most of it. But I guess it was probably good that you guys were here because it's like, oh, I can't look like a complete sissy and quit because Lexi's doing it. So <laughs> I have to, too. Um, but really like preparation we obviously this was pretty last minute on our side so we did none um cardio would be like so helpful if you could have a little bit of that just so you can hike and not feel like you're dying um i would say a little strength training for your legs yeah your legs if you've got packing me packing camp is grueling yeah it's just like coming out of it now like i obviously had a good time and i i want to go back but like at first it took a few days for like it to set in that it was like, oh man, I'm doing this and I'm going to have to keep doing this and it's just going to end up being okay. And like, we'd stand at camp and look and it'd be like, okay, which way do you want to go? And I'm like, none of those ways. Like they all <laughs> suck. <laughs> it's like, yep. it's all, all up. up. I don't want to do it. There's lots of, let's start there and then we're going to cross over to there and maybe come down and go up over there. And, yeah. then, and then the nose started flowing. Yeah. But by yeah. the end of it, then it's like, Hey, no, let's go up this one. Like, yep. cause you actually see oh, stuff yeah. and you're excited about it. But, um, Definitely, like, for next year, I want to have some cardio. I'd like to do some stuff with, like, a pack on already so your legs can mm-hmm. build some strength. I got lucky. My legs were pretty strong, but I had, like, no cardio. I thought you were going to kill me. Rod's like a mountain goat. He just, like, goes and just runs, like, up every hill ever, and I don't. <laughs> so that was pretty interesting. Pages We'd, like, pace. look with binos and Rod's, like, walking way ahead. <laughs> well, I'm bent over trying not to puke. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. it worked. It Everybody worked. improved each day, too. I mean, it gets easier. I think you get used to the altitude. You get used to the hike and the miles. Your muscles actually recover pretty quickly if you're eating, eating and drinking some water. Yeah, I think I remember from training with the games, they told us two weeks to acclimate when you go to a different elevation uh-huh. of, su- of substantial difference, obviously. Yeah. But um, how about the the quality? I, I'm interested to hear your perspective on numbers of, of elk for, that we saw because – for me, this is Elkapalooza. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are yep. more elk in these drainages that we're hunting. There's a, there's a bunch of them. And um, elk are pretty scattered everywhere, and they're not talking. Yep. So, you know, you're kind of cruising through and, you know, dodging bears, it seems like. But yeah. um, you, you're yeah. cruising through, and you're, you're finding little pockets of activity. And these elk will move in and move out, it seems like. And you don't see the same ones day in and day out. Yeah, like they definitely think. go a couple miles day to day. Yeah. So, if like, from her perspective of being a new elk hunter, I would say she probably really got Kristen on some of the. She got spoiled. Yeah, I she I'd saw elk, hunted elk every before day. In like the whole zone, we'd seen like three, and then I killed one. So bow hunting's totally different because rifle hunting, if you see one, you can pretty much find a way to kill it. We're like bow hunting. I saw a bunch that I really wanted to kill, and then it was like, okay, now how do you get in there to make that happen? That's the challenge. But yeah, compared to where I've hunted before, I've hunted elk in Colorado. Like this was there was like elk everywhere in comparison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've hunted a lot in Wyoming, and it's good. Like I said, a lot of those smaller bulls come to a call really well. and But you, middle of the hunt, we might go three or four days in a row without seeing elk, and then finally you'll be into them again. Here we were able to see elk every day, and mm-hmm. largely because we come in, we camp kind of high where we have a good vantage point. We can glass right out of camp, you know, 20 yards out of camp. We're glassing, and on the days the smoke wasn't bad, we could see really well and pick up elk right there most days. Yeah, and I think um, – if you compare it to other areas I've been in for sure, you know, the neat thing about where we're hunting at is a big bull could pop up almost anywhere. Mm-hmm. And um, the plan this morning was to get up and leave at like light, which didn't quite happen yeah. for us. <laughs> actually, me and Dave and Lexi, yeah. but somebody was rolling out of camp and had to go chase one more bull right yep. in front yeah. of the tent. Yeah, I I think if we had a few more days that we probably could have figured out how to get in on like a, like a decent sized one for sure. Um, I noticed as the season went on, when we first got there, there was seemed like more elk, but it was more like cows, spikes, little three points, little four points. I felt like 
as the days went on, you saw less quantity, but it was more quality. And so um, they kept out smartness, but also obviously this was our first time there. And so kind of learning the area, it was like we saw some on the hillside on the last day where we knew how to get in there. We're on day one, two, and three. It was like, well, we're just going to stand back because we don't want to we don't want to bust them out. We don't know right. how to get in on them. So, I mean, we learned a lot when it comes to that, but I definitely want to try and fill that tag. <laughs> so, yeah, I yep. woke up with the alarm, and I was like, you want to go? And he was like, no, my knee hurts. And I was like, all right. So I laid there for a little bit, and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go glass. And I could see one right from camp, so I decided I'd take a run at him, but he outsmarted me. Shocker. <laughs> yeah, shocker. <laughs> well, <laughs> yep. shot. We actually had to walk out with camp on our back while looking at a good bull still about yeah. a mile away. Yeah, yeah, that was that, hard. That was yep. a good one, actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. he'd do. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a pinch. Yeah. Um, so I guess one more thing we'll go over is we'll talk about something that doesn't seem to be talked about a lot, and and it gets into this whole ethical thing. So we're not going to go down that road, but I'm going to turn the table and make it more about perception um, versus reality of what it means to be prepared archery wise. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, you, you know, Paige is a world-class shooter, world-class. Um, I don't, did you 22 the book, Bigfoot this year? I did, I 21 him. 21 him. You don't I even want to know, know what I had to do him. to get that far, though, so <laughs> is, is sketch. <laughs> so the, the Bigfoot, for those that have not shot Redding or ever read about or heard about or saw it, it's, it's 101 yards. And that dot is probably about, what, coffee can size? Yeah, is that about I think right? that's Maybe how they bigger. do it, I think, is yeah. a coffee can. Yeah, and she can pretty drop size. them in there with pretty regularity. Yeah. If that's a word. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I think. Uh, yeah. So, to, you don't, I don't hear a lot of people, I guess, and I don't try not to listen to a whole lot of podcasts. I don't want to get skew, skewed too much, but you hear some people talk about being ready to go out on their hunt, and I hear them talk about their, their sleep systems and their tents and their backpacks and their boots, but I don't hear them talk about their yeah. shooting. So, again, you're an exception because you shoot all the time, longer distances. Mm -hmm. What, what, what kind of a routine, if someone was, hey, I want to go elk hunting, and they're used to shooting whitetails at 20 yards, they don't need to shoot any further than that, which is a lie. Yeah. <laughs> but <Okay. laughs> I, I'm glad you all convinced yourself of that. <laughs> yeah. But um, what kind of, if someone was going to go through like a training course, you do some cool teaching stuff with the National Field Archery Association. You do some camps. Um, what, how, how much do you think a person should practice in order to be proficient? Let's just call it 50 yards. Because for elk hunting, especially this open country stuff, you, you should be able to shoot pretty proficiently out of the 50 yards. Yeah. Well, most of us shoot just about year-round being target archers. So when we go switch to our hunting setup, it's almost easy. Our kill area goes from a target perspective where you're shooting at a Tiny very dot. small dot, and then all of a sudden our game animal has a big kill area. Right. So it's not super hard for us to just get the bow tuned, start shooting in whatever your effective range is, and you know the situation, how alert the animal is, what you're shooting through, how windy, yep. this, that, and the other problem with uh, a lot of bow hunters they don't touch their bow till a week before the season and then they're going to go out and shoot at critters that's not so like what i always tell people again everybody progresses at different rates like right. you the more you work with people and the more you shoot you see that and so i don't know if there's like a magic number of what people should shoot but i always tell people like if you can't keep your arrows in like the main part of the paper plate like you shouldn't even remotely try shooting that I far agree. like mm -hmm. i shot my elk at like 70 yards um, I sighted in on like a feed of face, but like when we were shooting that, it's like, I can keep them all in the yellow. Yeah. So I feel like if I can shoot an elk there. 70, 80 yards. Yeah. Right. With my hunting bow. And so mm -hmm. it's like, again, going back to the ethical thing, not to go there, but to go there a little bit. It's like, I mean, Lexi shot hers at like what? Five feet. Yeah. So like in that instance, like <laughs> that's Park awesome. Style. Yeah. And then mine was 70 yards. Mm -hmm. And so you never really know. I feel like if you're going to go out there, then you need to at least be ethical enough that if there's one not in your range to not take that shot um especially on an elk because they're so big in comparison we're used to hunting like little black tail it's pretty much you can hit them and they're gonna die yeah. like elk yeah. aren't like they're that definitely at all. a big tough critter with the will to live and yeah and you go to a hunting situation there's nerves too it's not just standing in your backyard shooting at mm -hmm. a paper plate making sure you can hit it right. i mean all of a sudden you're gonna be jacked up excited yeah, and there's there's wind, and your legs are burning, and your lungs are burning, and you probably just ran trying mm -hmm. to get to it. Like, I would even say, like, do do some jumping jacks and then try and shoot your bow. It's yeah. like, that's yep. kind of what it feels like, like, mm -hmm. the whole time. Like, I know with mine, we took off running down the hill and tried to call oh, yeah. and stop him. And it was tough. So, oh, yeah. I mean, but definitely be prepared. Don't come out here and just expect it to be easy because it was far from easy. And not only do you need to be, like, physically prepared, you need to have all your stuff, like you said, your gear. Right. But if you can't shoot your bow, and the whole point is bow hunting, you probably should go back to the drawing board. Right. Yeah. 
or at least have respect for the animals and limit yourself on the distance you're mm -hmm. going to shoot at them. And, and there is tons of resources that are out there. So I don't want to discourage you by saying this, but um, you, you can find places. And Archery Talk is not one of those places. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, somebody's going to get really mad about that. <laughs> but I'll back there's, that. <laughs> there's just a lot of people that are on there that are, you know, kind of, what do you call them, armchair quarterbacks that are giving advice. Maybe if people don't have to show their name and who they are, then you probably shouldn't listen to what they're saying. Right. But there are some great resources on there, too. That there said, I mean, I know Jesse's been on there once in Broadwater. Yeah. Some people mm -hmm. don't know his name is George Riles. And mm -hmm. So there is good information on there. Yeah. You just sure. really got to sift through it to find it. So. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're new, sometimes that's hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. So don't believe everything you hear right yeah. out of the gate. <laughs> and we'll do a different. We're kind of worried a little bit about um, rain. I guess we're stuck to that. Like, yeah. You could um, close this if you don't mind, Lexi. Um, so we don't lose that computer that would suck for me <laughs> um but uh th there's a ton of resources and like there's camps that are around mm -hmm. i've got bow schools I'll, I'll have a, a schedule out Paige has bow schools that she does mm -hmm. um, what are they mm -hmm. called how do they find those um i'm actually doing right now i'm working with youth so kids like 9 to 15 it's called kids outdoor sports camp we have a website mykosc.org they don't learn like high in-depth archery stuff but i mean I, we do stuff all the time we answer Basic, questions online yeah. we've been doing the nfaa like the high level they're the youth and the adult compound academy so like those yep. are really good mm -hmm. ways to come in now that's not something that's geared toward bow hunters that's more like high level compound target archery right um but i really believe that if you're good in one aspect it carries over to the other um so i mean obviously it's a different site different like you said different release possibly mm -hmm. but realistically when you can shoot a bow you can pretty much adapt to that kind of stuff um Practice, like, gapping your pins. I know working with people back home, it's like they shoot 20, 30, 40, 50, but they don't ever try 45 or 47. Like, they don't practice right. that. So when it happens, it's they're like, oh, man, what do I do? Do I aim high? Do I aim low? Do I look in the middle? So there's just a lot of things like that where people don't think to be prepared in that instance, but it's like you need to. Well, and you, the, the Compound Academy, for those who, who think I don't need to go through any of that target stuff, you do go through a much higher level of, um, well, just bow tuning. Yeah. For example, mm -hmm. I know you guys teach that, and and Bowtech is it most is all are all their bows now two cams or no? There's still I'm some really binary stuff. Really, spot like that. Sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> as far as I know, the ones I I've believe shot. they are. How's that? The actual Dude, Bowtech mainline bows, I believe, are two cams are extremely <laughs> easy to tune. Mm -hmm. They really are. And, and with and their dual yoke system, it's yep. that amazing night and day. tuning. So is you like guys dead. talk a lot about in your classes, and once mm -hmm. you can get in my mind any bow that I've had that's been tournament ready, I shouldn't say any. Nine out of ten setups that I've had that have shot really, really well are those arrows are flying pretty dadgum good. I mean, mm -hmm. better than what most guys are out of the gate that have never tuned a bow before and slapped yeah. together and followed a list. Yeah. So they're very valuable, is my point. Uh, anytime you can get access to them. I know John Dudley's got some stuff out there with yeah. um, Knock On. Um, I don't know if it's knockon.com or something like uh, that. I don't know. Sure. But he's got um, some great resources. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of places. Pretty much anywhere you go. You go to any... You know, a lot of the times the hunting people don't really look at the target people for advice when it comes to that stuff because right. it's kind of separated. But realistically, I mean, tuning a bow is tuning a bow. And, I mean, archery tips are archery tips. And so, like, even Jesse or Levi or any of those people who have stuff like that out there, like, utilize it. There's yeah. no reason not to. Yep. And YouTube channels, I know that um, Griv has one. Uh, yeah. I don't remember what his is called. George is an awesome coach. Yeah, like I've got I got to work yeah. with him at both. He the has last a ton of knowledge. George yeah. Riles, <laughs> the last yep. two youth compound academies, and it's yep. crazy to watch him work. Jimmy Butts has opened a new place down south in New, mm -hmm. new Orleans, Louis I think, somewhere in Louisiana, yeah. Baton Rouge. Um, a world champion archer. So there there are tons of resources. I, I wish I could list them all out. Cause obviously, I'm not going to because <laughs> yeah. I can get back to talking about elk. <laughs> yep. Um, that I, I just wanted to make sure I covered that a little bit because I, I think it's it's really cool to hunt with you know a world champion and somebody who really knows their stuff and then to watch well, her ace well one. We're hunting with yards. an Olympian, so yeah. uh, I feel like it's a pretty good team. <laughs> 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 yeah, we were probably a, it, it's a slaughter fest. Yeah, actually. yeah we did good. <laughs> <laughs> it's but not really fair for yeah, the if we can get maybe. in range, it's like we're dangerous. Yeah, that's well, the hard part. Animals always move, and so you know it's mm -hmm. not. I don't want to make it sound like we're slinging arrows out there a long ways, no. but no. it is pretty um, special to watch uh, someone. I, in fact, because I watch Paige, uh, Lexi and I both watch Paige shoot hers from up above about 300 feet, probably in elevation. <laughs> we watched. Yeah. Yep. Oh. <laughs> so it was a good time. Yeah, definitely. Um, Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, it's a blast. Fun. This was cool. I thought, 
I never wanted to do this again. So, like, yeah. the first day two one days, or two, we were never backpack hunting again. <laughs> no, I thought it was, I thought it was terrible. But then, as the days went on, and you adjust, like you said, to the elevation and to having a pack on. Like I've never had to hunt with a pack before. So, like even day packing and like having to carry your water around, just like things like that, I've never done before. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, as you start seeing elk and you start doing it, you adjust. Like my cardio got a little bit better. Like you just get used to your legs hurting like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> then it was like, okay, I like this. I want to, c- I want to come back. But definitely, um, for me, because I'm a pretty lazy person in general, like, like stick it out. Because if if they wouldn't have been here, like I would have quit and <laughs> yeah. left like way before. <laughs> I'd have looked at that hill and be like, ah, no, I'll be at the hotel. <laughs> so yeah, stick it out. Like give it a try. It was it was way cool. Now that mm-hmm. done looking back on it. I wish we'd have done one. Of course, I'm not carrying all this gear up in the mountains with us. But I wish I would have done one on all the gear that we all had. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, I mean, your your gear was pretty. Ex- oh. I'm gonna say actually it was pretty average compared to what most people would have had. Probably. Yeah. Okay. It was heavy for. Th- where we went up, it was a decent amount of weight yeah. for sure. But and because someone got us lost. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> added like a long ways to our hike. <laughs> that was conditioning. Yeah, yeah, it was. I was just trying to break in. <laughs> that um, added to my mo- motivational <laughs> speech the next day I had to do. <laughs> well, there's some stuff we used up here that um, I'm not probably going to pack again unless I'm hunting like Nevada or something. A spotting scope, which I've always been on the fence about. Again, I didn't need it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's probably – Four or five pounds I'll cut out my pack before I head back out in two days or three days. Um, what about you guys? Like, of, of the stuff that you have, what do you think was the most useful and what was the most not useful that you wish you wouldn't have taken? I'm glad you brought all the food, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we did pack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not about packing food when I 30 pounds of again. mountain house meals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we had enough food to, like, live there for, like, a month. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is fine. Like, my whole thing, I didn't want to starve up there because, like, I get pretty hangry. Like, that's a problem. <laughs> so I was like, if you're going to make me camp in the woods and, like, sleep in a tent, and, uh, and all this stuff and like hike then i at least want to be able to eat um so we took a lot of food we did not need that much food but, but I mean, you know what comes with lots of food is we packed a whole nine pack of toilet paper yeah that was necessary <laughs> it was <Goodness>. necessary <laughs> like take take enough that's don't, all i gotta say wet wipes break for a huckleberry milkshake yeah no yep, those uh, are bad. no i mean obviously all your archery gear is a necessity like you need binos you need a range finder you need arrows and broadheads like all that stuff you have to have but as far as like our pack goes um a lot of it was food you know we took in rain gear we didn't end up needing it that was quite a bit of weight actually but, but it's important because yeah, thunderstorms roll in this time of year and it was actually raining the first phone. evening we were in there so yeah weird. yeah and it i think it been like almost 60 days i think they said yeah. since we've had rain in this yeah. area and then we took I mean, you had, had like, a, a jet boil to boil water, which was good. We brought a frying pan, which we could have definitely done we without not. a pan. We didn't need it. So, my plan. makeshift bowls. I wanted to shoot, like, grouse and, like, rabbits because I thought I was going to starve <laughs> and I would eat them. But we couldn't find any. <laughs> so, <laughs> the pan on was elk. useless. <laughs> um, you get on elk and then grouse would pop out and you yeah. couldn't shoot them. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, I used uh, my water, just water treatment real quick. Mm-hmm. You guys had, I hadn't seen it before, and I'm sure it's common out west here, but um, I usually use a, a UV pen. It's a stair pen, but mm-hmm. what, what you guys had a squeezable It was, uh, I believe it's called the Sawyer Squeeze. It's just a little squeeze bag, and it goes through a filter that you screw on. It'll screw on the tops of certain water bottles, I believe a two liter bottle, and you just squeeze it through there. There's a little micro filter, and Makes it safe to drink. And the only thing about those are, for those that are listening, if you're going to be hunting the last two weeks uh, in Montana, or because um, <laughs> Montana goes into October 15th, which I'm sure mm-hmm. I'll be hunting then, but um, they can freeze. Yeah. And once they're froze, yep, they're game done. over. Yeah. yeah. But that was pre- it's pretty slick watching you guys. Yeah. You're way more efficient than what I was. Yeah. Filtering yeah, water. We only actually, as far as camp goes, made a trip to load our big bags once, and it got us through till the last day. Yep. There's so. things that there's like a normal hunter right not backpacking in that i never would have thought like having to have water filters like that's like i can just have water in my truck you know i don't have to think mm-hmm. about that and um again like heating the water up because you're you're obviously out there like there's you don't have anything mm-hmm. else to do yeah. um there was just a lot of things like that where like we had uh, big like bags that we put water in so we filtered water and had to take those back to camp MSR so we didn't bag. have yep. to hike down and get water all the time um, so not only do we have like our camelbacks that were in our pack, but we had to have water stashed at camp as well. So had we not had those big bags, I don't, you know, I don't know what we would have done. So there was a lot of stuff like that, that you really need to think ahead as far as, you know, you don't know how far water is going to be. And really, even though it wasn't that far, it was pretty steep and I didn't want to have to hike mm-hmm. down there every day right. for water. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just different things like that. If you're going to go backpacking hunting, that it's very different that you need to think ahead on. 
Um, like we brought in these little sleeping pads that like air mattress things we blew up and yeah, it might've been unnecessary weight, but we slept way better. Yeah, so that's one of those things that I would definitely keep. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my dad's advice cause he'd done this before and he didn't take one. So, I mean, I did on the way out here, I don't know if some people watching this probably saw, but I did like a Facebook live and was like, Hey, for people who have done this, like give me things that I really need to take in. Like, what's your advice? And I scrolled through the comments and a lot of it I already had. And then some of it I didn't. Um, and we got it. <laughs> so thing we did is we both drink energy drinks or coffee every day. So we bought caffeine pills so we didn't have to make coffee in the morning and waste water. Just have a caffeine pill so you don't end up with a little headache. We had ibuprofen or a leave because all the pills. hiking. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so vitamin C, the emergencies. So you get electrolytes and vitamins, I think helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Keeps you healthy. Yep. You don't want to be sick on the mountain. One thing to watch too is uh, your regulations to whether you can have and none of us did, obviously. We're, we're hunting Idaho, which seems to be like one of the most restrictive, yep. if not the most restrictive. You had to use fixed blades, fixed blade broadheads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you had to uh, no electronics. Use, yeah. No uh, no lighted knocks. Sight light, lighted knocks. None mm. of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so lots of little stuff to to look at, and there's a lot of preparation that goes into something like this, but it's not something that should scare anybody. I don't think. I mean, no. everybody should try it at least once. Yep. And yeah. And once you have the stuff, then you just use it. The yeah. next time you mm-hmm. go. So your first time getting into it, like we pretty much lived at Sportsman's Warehouse, like <laughs> across Loading many up. states, like buying everything <laughs> we could think of. And we got to the car and it was like the back of it was full and the whole back seat was full and like in between us. And it's like, you realize that everything we bought, we have to carry with us. Like we got a little excessive at the store. Um, but it is nice because like I said, once you have it, then then you have it and you can use it again. So yeah. that's that part's nice. Yep. That's I would say it's very expensive the first time you come out. Mm-hmm. Um, but after that, yeah, most of that stuff's reusable food, for really. years. Even the food, we'll throw it in a <laughs> yeah, till twenty forty seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean it'll go with all our the rest of our doomsday food. <laughs> yeah. We'll probably have enough mountain house for like three more elk seasons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, um, thanks a lot, guys, for taking some time. Yeah, thank you for like having us. Yeah, thanks out. for having us. It was cool. One thing I want to add too, because there's four of us. It was yep. like we could single pack an elk out. Yeah, even <laughs> we did. Decent sized bull. We got out in one trip. Yeah, and we were boning them out. Backpacking, I definitely suggest boning them out. Save yourself yeah. all that weight. Makes a big difference. I mean, there's some. Um, there's another resource that you guys might want to go to if you're checking in this first time. It's called Elk 101. Um, Corey Jacobson. He's like a world champion elk caller, I think. Um, but he's got a. It, it, it. I think I want to say it's like a hundred bucks or 150 bucks. It may seem like a little steep, but it's not that steep, honestly, because he'll probably save you hundreds of dollars, and he probably has some mm-hmm. specials here and there if you yeah. punch in some codes. But um, it's not it's not that big a deal. Once yep. you get out here and you experience, the toughest part is, for sure, finding elk. Yep. And once you find them, the, the killing isn't as... Um, if you're putting in the effort, you'll get an opportunity. It's just yeah. depending on how many days yeah. it takes for that to happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. I mean, it's, it's not hard to harvest an elk. Mm-hmm. Um, what's hard is to find an elk. Yep. Yeah. And Luckily for us, you had already done that part. <laughs> <laughs> so we got spoiled, like yep. he said. But I just want to add, too, we talked a lot about, like, the physical stuff. It was, like, run, hike, backpack, shoot your bow. But it was, like, a lot mental, too. Oh, it yeah. is. Um, like, like, come that first day when we finally got to camp, like, that next morning, I feel like I was ready to have, like, a full-fledged breakdown. And I kept <laughs> saying, I'm like, dude, we barely made it in here once. And I'm like, if we have to two-pack elk and we're going to shoot three elk, like, there's six packs plus one back into camp. Like, yep. I won't make it in here eight times. <laughs> and, like, I had that. I'd broken it all down, and I was, like, starting to freak out when I really started to think about all of it and got a little right. overwhelmed. And then it was just like, well, suck it up and go hunt. And then as we did it, we ended up being able to one-pack the elk, which was nice. There's yep. four of us. Um, but once you start doing it, it got easier each time. Like every time we came it back does. in, it was mm-hmm. like, okay, like that wasn't as bad as it was the time before. And same thing heading back out. And so the packs, like the first time carrying however much weight felt horrible and then coming out with what we had. Um, like I could tell my legs were stronger. My cardio was better. I wasn't struggling as much. So it's like mentally, there's not a ton you can do to be prepared. You're just going to have to like suck it up and push through it when you get out there. Right. But, but don't give up on that side of it too. Cause that was for me probably harder. It was like, it was physically hard, but mentally you wanted to give up. Right. And that's where you got to nod. That's where I think too, like, you know, when you're <laughs> you talk about me getting way out ahead of you guys, <laughs> I, I don't realize I'm doing it sometimes because for me, most, first of all, I hate snakes, <laughs> hate snakes so for me i'm looking constantly at the ground and i have just a lot of stuff that's going through my head about planning about what's going to happen the next few hours let alone the next few days um so mentally for me keeping my head down 
and watching where I'm stepping is is how I get from point A to point B pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And then there's another thing though too. Um, Paige is extremely competitive, um, very <laughs> much so, like me and Dave and Lexi is too. All of us. Yeah, yeah. we all are, <laughs> and we all want to be there first. Um, and and that drive is, I'm not gonna say you have to have it, but it helps. Yeah, a lot. Definitely. Yeah, like if I I think if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't have like made it through yeah. the trip. Because like, you didn't want Lexi to beat you. And I was not too. first by any means. I was like bringing up the back the whole time. Yeah. But it was like, okay, I still can't quit. Like I, you know, you got to keep, mm -hmm. got to keep going. But yeah, I mean that definitely helped. Like I said, it I. It was different, like, how he – I just stared at the sky, and I was like, lightning strikes me dead, <laughs> make it in. <laughs> and it kept not happening, so I just had to keep walking. But, yeah, I mean, once you start doing it, then, you know, and it was like once we were back there, I was like, well, I'm going to have to hike out at some point, so I should probably not worry about it because I'm going to have to. And then once you kill an elk, it's like you're – because I happened to get the first elk. It was like, okay, how are we going to get this thing out? And we, and we got it out, and that wasn't that bad, and we came back in. And at that point, you're kind of excited. Like, there's a reason, mm -hmm. you know, that you're coming yep. back out. You're coming back in. You've seen elk. So the motivation is there. You're not just thinking about, like, oh, man, I have this giant pack full of stuff, and we're going to wander until we find where camp is. Yeah. Yep. Positive well, attitude makes all the difference. Another mm -hmm. thing, suggestions for early season, pillowcases are really good game bags. Oh, Lightweight. Yeah. That's the nice part about pillowcases. They're pretty durable, but nice and light. I you liked can, what they had, I had too. That four cool. in my pack, kept two in pages, and between quarters boned out and the miscellaneous meat, you can fit it really easy for just a couple pounds because the flies are horrible. I mean, yeah, they were bad. thousands yeah. of flies on the elk in a matter of minutes. Yeah, yep. they had some so. fancy stuff. Pretty much if you guys want anything like custom <laughs> or like nice, like packed shoes, whatever you name it, like go to Rod because <laughs> for or food, like for everything, he knows someone or something. So that was kind of cool. We just use like generic, like normal. I used to like pillowcases. And no, they work well, we found, though, and they the stretch. Store. So you can still fit a full-size quarter in a pillowcase, yeah. even yep. a queen one. And then it's easy to tie off. Paracord, very important for yeah. getting it hung, getting a chill on the meat. Tying stuff to your pack works great. You don't need to pack a big, heavy knife in. You used a little, tiny Havilon, and I yep. use a little, tiny buck knife that's very small. Oh, yep. And that's all we use for a whole elk, those little guys. Yeah. So you don't yep. need a big And both you two working on it really knife. sped up that process, too, which was nice. Like yeah, the teamwork helps. helped. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely Get would say if you're – apart and cool in a hurry when it's 85 degrees out If that you were day. by yourself, I would uh, I would have been concerned myself mm -hmm. personally. I mean, I know some tricks that will help keep me cool yep. in some mm -hmm. of these environments. Um, which is probably for another podcast, but yeah. like I would have, if it were me by myself, I would have packed yeah. the bull down to water and I probably mm -hmm. would have laid it out across some branches. Yep. Get a chill um, on it before you start packing it. it. Yeah. We were lucky. It was windy almost every time we killed an elk, even the one yep. midday, if we were able to hang it, get a chill on it before we started packing it. So but that didn't stop the flies at no. all. So. so the bags are really important there. Yeah. yeah. I really think hunting with people, like having you guys there was awesome. Cause like I said, when we killed one, it was like, okay, Hey, now teamwork, like everyone's going to get this out um for whatever we need like whether it was water or food like one of us had something the other one didn't like right. it was really nice especially because i mean you've kind of done this before you do this all the time i was brand new that it's like i kind of got to experience it with some help along the way like i would by no means say i was ready to go out there like with by myself <laughs> or just him because we'd probably kill each other out there but uh <laughs> no i heard him in the tent a couple times in the morning waking each other up but <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, if it happens way out there it's a natural cause <laughs> Married life. I don't know, but yeah i mean it was, it was really neat like getting to do it with someone who really knew what they were doing because then we got to learn and watch and follow behind you <laughs> every time we <laughs> yeah. walked anywhere. No, it was no. it was really neat. I I learned a lot, not even just about backpacking and all that stuff, but like how to hunt the elk. Like we don't hunting blacktail. Like you don't use wind checkers. Like never done that before. That was we had that stupid thing of like whatever it is out all the time. <laughs> the wind. Yeah, Paige uh, never took hers out. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he had one in each hand. So there's just little tricks like that that it's like depending on the kind of game you hunt, like. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. so different, and so it was kind of neat getting to see all of that and the different techniques um, that you use for this. Like I know you talked about people back in the Midwest on like flatland and stuff like that. This is not flatland. No. <laughs> There's a lot that's different about it. So and you can go way off the board into you know these little specialty stuff like you mentioned earlier. Like we, um, I, I like using tags bags. They're called. Mm -hmm. I mean, get them from Rockslide.com. I think Ryan Avery might own that or kind of moderates it. 
Um, so you can probably find him on Facebook or Rock Slide. I think you yeah, can they were him. cool. Yeah, were nice. You can mm-hmm. reuse them, throw them in a wash machine mm-hmm. like we did, yep. uh, and we did the pillowcases too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you know, there's stuff like boots. I know we talked about because you guys got a couple different kinds of boots on. Yeah. And, um, well, you may not have boots on right now. Yeah, oh. I might be wearing sandals. He's wearing the sparkly <laughs> sandals. <laughs> <laughs> they work. <laughs> and um, packs. You know, you guys had t- stereotypical packs. Everybody mm-hmm. stock packs are just off the shelf. Mm-hmm. And you Rod know. has everything custom. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I love my Gafaro stuff. True yeah. story. Um, and, you know, tents, you can start shaving weight. There's so many little um, – I, d- I like custom companies. Those little companies that seem to make – stuff because they have a lot of pride in what they're doing mm-hmm. and if you ever have a problem with it you can take care of it right away not that you can't with the bigger companies but mm-hmm. it just seems mm-hmm. like for me you know i like the thought of somebody you know sending them in a map of my footprint and then having them custom making a boot and i put on and literally n- never had a blister on mm-hmm. and now lexi she was climbing up and down the mountains too with a brand new pair of boots yep no complaints of sore feet whatsoever there um and so like that kind of little stuff all makes a difference but before you go diving off in the edge you know come out get your feet wet pick a state like colorado honestly colorado has more elk than any other state i think you pulled up some stats the other day we yeah. were just jacking around at the restaurant <laughs> or something but um w- way more yeah um but idaho's got a lot too idaho is um can be tough to find them in mm-hmm. montana can be extremely tough to find them and yep. you can waste a lot of boot leather so i would just you know, you're going to run into a lot of people in Colorado. Um, you're going to run into people in Idaho. A lot Idaho of people in Idaho, too. too yeah. Yeah. We ran into a guy on a horseback. And yep. Sometimes uh, you can do like we did, put more effort in, get in there, and be away from people for a bit compared to other areas. Yeah. So. But you can get your feet wet. And then, honestly, too, being around other people isn't such a bad deal either. You know, if you ran into a problem or something, yeah. especially if you're yeah, it's solo. Yeah, a comfort thing. Like I do a lot. Yep. Yeah. And then, look, like us, having four is pretty comfortable, too. Yeah. It is awful nice one trip with a, a bull yep. and have yeah. everything coming yep. out. And That's especially cool. with the heat and then having the two of us on them. I mean, we had the elk completely apart and in bags and well under an hour, I mean, for full-size yeah, it was, elk. it so. was quick. I'd, I'd done it one time with my dad, and it was just him. And I was standing there like, oh, what's he doing? Yep. It took a while. And so it was pretty crazy just watching you two, like, go to town on it. And then, yeah. We've I mean, done it was one good. or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a few. It, it was pretty cool. But, yeah, everything as far as, like, packing out went way faster. Like, mm-hmm. like you know, even hunting, it was really nice because it's like, hey, where are you guys going? Where we're we going? We go opposite directions. If we see something, we let you know and vice versa. So it's like you kind of have more eyes. You can cover a little bit more ground, kind of see what the animals were doing. Yep. Because, um, obviously, back there, there's a lot of country to cover, mm-hmm. and it's thick in areas. So you you know, there may be something there that yep. may not be, but no, it was a really cool experience. Like I, I definitely want to do it again now, mm-hmm. but like the first three days, it was like a <laughs> heck no. Yep. But then as time went on, like I said, it was like, I got more and more like fun and I stopped thinking about like the, oh man, next time we kill something, the hike's going to suck. Like that didn't cross my mind, but the first two days, it's like all I thought about. Right. So it's just, it's a process. Like it definitely is. And I'm sure like come next year for the first like week before I'm gonna be like oh man that hike <laughs> oh but you you do it and, and you move on you get through it yeah. yep <laughs> oh yeah a lot of bees if you're allergic yeah. make sure you have your Something epipen good. I actually have one in my pack um, Benadryl is good if you get stung mm-hmm. you can take some of those but as soon as you get a critter down the bees and flies find you in a hurry yeah yeah so. and it's uh it's kind of freaky actually yeah if you've never seen that before. especially if you know how far you got to go if you got right. stung or, or like you said bit by a snake mm-hmm. I mean. you know one thing we didn't get that i we can't be both said we contemplated getting mm-hmm. was one of those spots oh like yeah those mm-hmm. and neither of us had them and you know i kept thinking about it and it's like man if somebody got bit by a snake someone's gonna have to like run out to the truck for like miles and then go miles and then miles and it was like yep. you're probably gonna die so it was like hope you don't <laughs> because it's gonna be hours you know before anyone can get there that's probably one thing realizing now how far back we were mm-hmm. that i may get next time that i didn't have this time um just in case like we got really lucky nothing happened mm-hmm. like we were all sorts of yep. good but uh i mean i know a lot of people have been back in places and had accidents yeah. happen hunting i mean hunting accidents are kind of common and so you know, that's one thing I think would have made me feel better. But really, other than that, I feel like we were really prepared. Yeah. Like I said, Rod had everything custom. We just went down to, the, like... Yeah, like we I were said, a little we went, heavier on our gear. We did. We went to Sportsman's. We bought whatever we could find that was, like, the lightest thing they had. And we got through it. So, like you said, yep. just go out and give it a try. Like, the basic stuff works. And then there's definitely certain things where, like, I actually kind of liked our tent. Mm-hmm. Like, so they each had, like, their own separate little tent thing. I don't know. Yeah. We slept in one, which made me feel better in the dark because i'm kind of scared of the dark so like that i would keep but then yep. like the shoe thing 
totally going to go to his shoe guy yep. and have sleep some of those bags. made. A decent, lightweight sleep hated, bag's worth it. I Page hated my sleeping bag. Everything. It <laughs> so. was terrible. So there's definitely things now that it's like, okay, this is so worth spending the money. And then there's other things where, depending on what you like personally, it's like, well, that might not be worth it to me. But right. like for me, the shoe thing was I thought was awesome. Yeah. Those are uh, Lathrop & Sons is the name of the company, or Lathrop & Sons. Um, and they're out of Illinois, and you can find them online. But um, some people, you know, too, need some comforts that other people don't. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't need a cot, but yeah. some people – they got to have a cot. Yeah. They just got to. So um, whatever makes you comfortable back in there, it's just you'll realize no matter what you do that you have way too much. Oh, yeah. First Especially after a couple yeah. outings, you're like, hey, I don't need this. Every single day yep. something came out of our day pack, yep. in which yeah. our our day packs, for all of us, our day packs are packed to pack in with. So yep. ours are how much? Five pounds heavier than yours, I think. Yeah, they but are. They're, yeah. they're very efficient <laughs> for packing meat and stuff, but weight-wise – we didn't need it. Yeah, yep. like one thing Something. I know, like the first day we hiked in, like my arms right here from the pack were just killing me Sore. the next day. Mm-hmm. And like Lexi's weren't that bad. Like I know you said her pack was like custom made to where they like brought the straps in so it fit. And so there's definitely some stuff where you spend the extra money for like those kind of comforts that it helps. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we got through it with like our basic generic stuff and it was mm-hmm. fine. But listening to like our random complaints about stuff versus your guys's, like you got it figured out. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it, it was expensive, though, figuring it all yeah. out, but worth it for yep. sure. That's what I say. Come out and just have fun. Go to a place like Colorado where if you forget something, you can run somewhere and grab it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, try to stay kind of close to the truck. It seems like you got to be about a mile and a half, I would say. I'd say a little further than what most guys do. you got to be from the truck, it seems like, to get into elk mm-hmm. um, on a regular basis at least. You can get lucky for sure. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, um, and there's we could go down for hours talking about mapping and how to find elk and all that. And you know, Someday we'll do one of those. But yeah. I thought it would be cool to do one with yeah. you guys. We had a good time with you. Um, you know, we were successful. And I thought, you know, it'd be kind of cool to do a little quick podcast about mm-hmm. what it's like out on your first elk hunt. Yep. So, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. I'm really glad we did it. Like I said, is now now I'm like, oh, that was so cool. Yep. Yeah, proud of all of us, especially the girls, because they got yeah. way better each day. There was <laughs> big <laughs> improvements. Yeah. improvements. Yeah. Speed, attitude, everything. Yep. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, we're about to get crushed here by a storm, yep. it almost feels like anyways, and we need to probably cut this short, so... Thanks, guys. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having blast. us. I'm really glad we got to come out. It was yeah. pretty cool. Anything else you want to say or where can people find you guys at on Facebook or uh, wherever? Yeah. Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. Dave Gore. I don't have an athlete page yet, so my regular one. Any questions, feel free to message me. Yeah, I have uh, Page Gore Archery, which is my athlete page. My normal one, too, is up. You can get access to that. It's just Page Gore. Instagram. Uh, I think it's like Page Gore 21. I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, we're all online, and we answer – like, obviously, I just said I'm new to this. Like, basic archery questions, tuning questions, mm-hmm. like, stuff with your bow. Um, there were some corners I cut. Like, I took – like, I normally hunt with a sidebar and a bunch of front weight. I took all my weights off. I kept my front bar, but, like, no weight, and that was it. Um, for me, I could still shoot my bow really accurately without that. He, he was like, no, I can't shave that weight. So, again, it was, like, a personal type could, thing. But if I had to take that 80-yard shot that I'm very comfortable with, I'd rather have my bow yeah. performing at its best you know out of respect for the animal yeah Yeah. so there's like a lot of different stuff like that too that um i mean i think all of us could kind of help with so like i said any Mm -hmm. like archery type questions hit us up that's that's something i do know Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) not so much this thing but but uh yeah archery i can handle yeah yeah and i think that's um like i said i can't emphasize enough the archery skill part Mm -hmm. of it so it was good having you in camp and having a couple killers along is always a bonus (laughs) so Thanks a lot for coming. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Yeah. For, for all your hard work. <laughs> you were just pack mule on <laughs> this Go one. Go boy. <laughs> it was a pre-exercise for Rod's other hunts. You guys need to pick up those alpacas. You're going to. Yeah. 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 Get them so out next there. year, I'm buying alpacas. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get a whole lot easier. Paige just He's likes laughing. animals. He's laughing. I'm serious. It's going to happen. <laughs> well, we'll catch you guys later. And these two, you can always see at the Reading shoot because they live right there. Yep. And um, me, you know where to find me. He'll be at our house for the Reading shoot. That's true. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys somewhere on the tournament trail or hopefully not in the the mountains, actually. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Don't want to see you guys there. But on Facebook, you can see us there. Catch you later. Have a good one. See ya.